Hello and welcome to this solution of a linear problem using graphical method. Now today's problem is a special case. We had talked in last video that there are certain special cases when you try to solve a linear problem using graphical method. A special case that we discussed last time was that we get an unbounded solution. Unbounded solution is a solution that extends to no limits. There are no limits to that solution. We do not know what are the boundaries. Infinite, infinite were the boundaries in case last time. So one case is when you get infinite solution or unbounded solution. The other two possible scenarios are when you get no solution at all or you get infinite solutions. So those are another two special cases. So one special case we discussed last time, another special case we'll discuss in this video. Now, before we go ahead and solve this video and see what are the problems, if we have a close look at this constraint, the second constraint that we have 3x1 minus 2x2 is less than a minus 20. If you have a look at this constraint, you'll see that the right hand side of this constraint is negative. Now, when you solve a linear problem using simplex or graphical method, your right hand side should never be negative to start with. When you are finding out your IBFS or when you are starting a problem, it should never be negative. But in this case, it is negative. Now, how do we overcome this negative scenario? What I will do is, I will multiply this complete constraint to minus 1. If I multiply to minus 1, what happens? It becomes minus 3x1, 3x1 multiplied by minus 1 is minus 3x1, minus 2x2 multiplied by minus 1 would become a 2x2. This less than sign will convert to a greater than sign. It is less than equal to, sorry, it will convert into greater than equal to. And this minus 20 into minus 1 would become a 20. So this is no more my constraint. I have converted my constraint into a positive RHS. Now let us go ahead and get some points so that we could plot them on the graph paper and then we will see what happens. So what is my first constraint? It is minus 2x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 9. Remember we convert the inequalities into equalities. So I have converted this inequality of less than into equal. We do so, so that we can get a line and then we will find out the area or region. So this is my first constraint. My second constraint is minus 3x1 plus 2x2 greater than equal to 20. Remember, I am not using this one as my constraint, rather this is my constraint from here on. So let me go ahead and find two points for each constraint so that I can construct a line. First point, second point x1, x2, first point and second point. Now, how do we solve it? If we take x1 as 0, suppose I take x1 as 0, what happens to this equation? Minus 2 into 0 plus 3 x2 is equal to 9. This term is vanished because of this 0. So, 3x2 is equal to 9 giving me x2 is equal to 9 upon 3 or 3. So, x2 comes as 3. Next is let me take x2 as 0. If I take x2 as 0 in this equation, it changes it in this way. Minus 2x1, x2 is 0. So, it will be plus 3 into 0 is equal to 9. So, it will be minus 2x1 is equal to 9. This term is gone with the wind because it was multiplied to a 0. And then giving me an x1 of 9 by minus 2 or minus 9 by 2 or minus 4.5. So this becomes my point. x1 0 and x2 3. This becomes first point x2 0 and x1 minus 4.5 is second point. So I can take care of my first constraint. 
what about second constraint if i put x1 is equal to 0 it becomes minus 3 into 0 plus 2x2 2 2 is equal to 20 this should have been an equality so 0 plus 2x2 2 2 is equal to 20 x2 2 is equal to 20 upon 2 or 10 i get x2 2 of 10 then immediately let me go ahead and put x2 is equal to 0. If I put x2 is equal to 0 in this equation, what happens? Minus 3x1 plus 2 into 0 is equal to 20. So, it becomes minus 3x1, this is gone, is equal to 20. x1 is equal to 20 upon minus 3 is equal to minus 20 upon 3 is equal to 6.66, right? So, when you put x2 is equal to 0, you get your value as minus 6.66. This is my second point for my second constraint. So, I have 0, 0,3 minus 4.50 and then I have 0, 0,10 minus 6.6 and 0. Let us go ahead and plot these points. For that, let us make a table and then we will proceed. Here is my coordinate system. Let me call this x1 and x2. My first point is 0, 3. x1 is 0 and x2 goes up to 3. Second point is x1 is at minus 4.5 while x1 goes to 0 x1 is at minus 4.5 while x2 dips to 0. The, on this complete axis, x2 is 0 and x1 advances to minus 4.5. And here, if I connect them, <coughs> I can get my line. Fine. And then, let us go ahead and plot the second one, 0, 10. 0, 10. X is, x1 is 0, x2 is 10. x1 is 0, x2, 10 would be here. And x1 is minus 6.66, x2 is 0. Minus 6.66 would be here. x1 is minus 6.66. Here we see. So, if I try to plot this line, it would be somewhat like this. So, these are my two constraints, this being the first constraint, this being the second constraint. Okay. Now, first constraint is of type less than. Here is my first constraint. It is of type less than. Less than is the area towards origin. For this constraint, area towards origin is all this. But remember, we do not consider third and fourth quadrant. So, what I will do is, I will mark my feasible region according to first constraint. What is the feasible region? It is only this area. This is the only area that is acceptable to first constraint. Fine. What about the second constraint? Second constraint is of the type greater than. So, greater than is away from origin. If we have a look at this constraint, here I have my second constraint and away from origin is all this area. All this area is away from origin. This area is towards origin. Why it is towards origin? Because here is my origin. So, I need away from origin area. So, I need all this area. What will be this area? This is my away from origin area. So, for second constraint, I am getting this area. For first constraint, I am getting this area. These areas acceptable to 1 and 2 are 
not overlapping at all. If you have gone through our other videos, you might have seen that we always get some overlapping area. From that overlapping area that we call, which we call feasible region, from that overlapping area we get the corner points and we find the values of those corner points and then we find the z value for those corner points. What is the process? You plot your constraints, you find the feasible region, from that feasible region you find the corner points, from those corner points you find the values of z, if it is a minimization case pick the minimum z, if it is a maximization case pick the maximum z. In this case the problem is we cannot start only, we do not have a feasible region, if we do not have a feasible region we will not get a corner points. So, here you see that this is the area acceptable to constraint 1, this is the area acceptable to constraint 2, there is no overlap, so there is no feasible region. So, what will be my solution to this problem? My solution to this problem would be so this is yet another special case when you try to solve a linear problem using graphical method. If you have any queries, comments, suggestions, do leave them in the comments box and if you have not subscribed to the channel already, please do subscribe to the channel, like and share this video and thanks for watching, bye bye, take care. Here are some cards related to the video you just watched. Feel free to browse across them and do leave your comments and suggestions and of course don't forget to subscribe if you have not already subscribed. Thanks for watching, bye bye.